Every time I turn around, there's another real estate investor who's ditching the traditional long-term rental approach to get into the more sexy, appealing, and potentially more lucrative space of short-term rentals or Airbnbs. Now, the big question is, which one is the better investment? And more importantly, which one should you invest in? So in today's video, we're going to dive into both to see which one is better. Hey, hey guys, guys, I'm Sarah. I'm Tony. And we are the, the Real, Real Estate, estate Robinsons. Robinsons. Now, Sarah and I are real estate investors who recently transitioned away from the traditional long-term rental approach and pretty much decided to focus exclusively on yeah. short-term rentals. Um, now, before we dive into why we made that change and what our opinion is on which one is the better approach, uh, if you guys can do us a huge favor and subscribe to our channel, um, hit, the know, like hit the like button, turn on notifications. Uh, give us a shout out. Give us a shout out. We're still a new channel, we're yeah. growing and all of the, the support really does go a long way. Before we decide which has a better return, let's take a little time to define what a long-term and a short-term rental are. So Tony, why don't you tell the viewers what is the difference between a long-term and a short-term rental? Absolutely. So a long-term rental is the traditional way of real estate investing. It's probably what most of you are already familiar with. Yeah. It's when you go out, you buy a property, you find a tenant, someone who's going to live there, and you sign a lease for that person to stay there for an extended period of time anywhere from you know as little as six months to maybe up to two years and during the life of that lease they're paying you a fixed amount every single month as a landlord in a long-term rental you make your money by charging your tenants a higher dollar amount in rent than what it costs you to operate the property that's where you make your spread now for short-term rentals let's define what those are a short-term rental is when you purchase a property but instead of having your tenant sign a long-term lease you have guests who stay at your property for you know anywhere from one night to two nights to maybe even a week, but it's yeah. usually a very short stay. And instead of having a fixed price that you charge every single guest, there's usually an average nightly rate that you charge people. So maybe on Mondays you charge one price, on the weekends you charge a different price, but it's not one fixed number. It varies on the day and it varies by the season. So one last thing to mention about short-term rentals is that these are usually marketed on sites like Airbnb yeah. or Verbo. You've probably okay. heard those sites, I'm sure, before, but that's what kind of separates them. You're not finding a long-term tenant, you're marketing on sites like that. Yeah. So really when you have a short-term rental, it's like a little hotel. So guests check in, mm -hmm. guests check out, you charge them a nightly rate and they pay uh, once they're done. So that is the difference between a long-term rental and a short-term rental. So now that we've defined the difference between a long-term Term in a short term rental, let's talk about which one is better. Drum roll. We're going to go through five major categories risk, passiveness, cost, predictability, and income. So, first up, let's talk about risk. Now, I'll start off by saying this long term rentals are inherently less risky than short term rentals. Uh, again, with a long term rental, you have a signed lease in place with your tenant that says they're going to pay you. X dollars per month, yeah. every single month for the life of the lease. So the only time that you really have risk with a long-term rental that you wouldn't have with a short-term rental is if you have a tenant that doesn't pay. Yeah. Uh, but even in those situations, you have routes that you can take where you can evict them, you know, except for weird times like 2021 when we're recording this, where there's like moratoriums and things like that. But I'd say the biggest risk associated with long-term rentals that you don't get with short-term rentals is the possibility of having to evict someone. With short-term rentals, you don't have to worry about tenants um, not paying rent or possibly evicting them because again, these are guests and they're only staying for a few nights at a time and you don't have to worry if they're going to pay or not. Now, quick sidebar, I'm sure you've maybe you've seen stories in the news about you know, the horrible people sneaking into Airbnbs and trying to, you know, make it their home. But that is the very, very, very rare exception. And I can almost guarantee that the number of evictions that happen in the short term rental space are far, far fewer than what yeah. you see in the long term rental space. Now, also sites like Airbnb and Verbo, they collect full payments from the guests before they even show up to your property. So you don't really have to worry about even collecting money yeah. from your guests if you're using sites like Airbnb and Verbo. Now, the other kind of point where it gets a little risky with short-term rentals is that you are at the mercy of the platforms that you're using. So yeah. we've seen horror stories of some owners who violated some policy unknowingly and their account gets closed and all of their bookings get canceled yeah. and 
all of their income coming in just pretty much goes to zero. And a lot of times without much explanation at all, you know, because again, you're at the mercy of these big platforms. So it's their call. So last up, when we talk about risk associated with short-term rentals is that uh, short-term rentals are in the travel industry. So if there's a, you know, kind of a big negative downturn in the economy where people stop traveling, obviously short-term rentals are going to be negatively impacted more than a traditional long-term rental will. Uh, so just one other thing to consider. So considering all the points we just made, I think we both agree that long-term rentals are less risky and are the winner of this round. So if we're keeping score right now, it's long-term rentals one, <laughs> short-term short rentals zero. zero. So next up, let's talk about passiveness. And when we use this word passive, what we're really just trying to say is how much work goes into managing these investments on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. Now, I'm going to assume that you'll be self-managing both your long-term rental and your short-term rental because, well, if you hire a property manager, then your passiveness is great because someone else is doing all the work for you. So for this uh, specific comparison, I'm assuming that you're self-managing. Now let's talk about long-term rentals first and how passive those are as an investment. Now, since you have one tenant who's there for the entire life of the lease, you only have to talk to one person. So there's definitely less communication. And with a long-term rental, your tenants are pretty much responsible for everything that kind of goes on within the house, barring any major kind of repairs that need to be done. Um, so they're the ones that are changing light bulbs, the ones that are typically changing the air filters. Um, they're not asking you for forks or knives or blankets. It's their house. You're really just there for the big major things. Now, obviously sometimes, you know, big repairs will come up where you might need to call a plumber or, you know, work with some other tradesperson to repair the property. But for the most part, your tenants are the ones that are caring for your property. So all that to say, there just isn't really much communication you need to have with your tenant when you're dealing with a long-term rental. Now, the last thing to kind of call out here too, is that since your tenants are staying there for a very long period of time, your turnover time on a property or, or the amount of time you have to dedicate towards a turnover is pretty small as well, right? You might only have to go in there once every six, 12, 18 months mm -hmm. to clean the property and get it ready for the next person. So I'd say the passiveness on a long-term rental is pretty good. Okay, so now let's talk about the passiveness with short-term rentals. So I'll start by saying that there is quite a bit of communication that's required for every single one of your guests that check in. So I actually am, I call myself the VP of guest relations uh, with our properties, AKA I'm the one that communicates with all the guests on our platforms, which we use Airbnb and Verbo. And I literally talk to the guests every day. That's the first thing I check on my phone. I don't check Instagram or my emails. First thing I check every morning is our Airbnb and Verbo app and respond to messages. And yeah, I would say some guests are needier than others, but yeah, it's, it's a uh, constant communication with every single guest. The other part of managing a short-term rental that takes away from how passive it is, is that you have to manage people to make this business work. So we're in pretty regular communication with our cleaners and with our handyman mm -hmm. uh, whenever anything kind of goes wrong with the property. So if our cleaner shows up and realizes that we're out of toilet paper, paper towels, or reaching out to us, let us know. If our cleaner gets there and there's a light bulb that's out or the guest might've broken something, we're coordinating with our handyman to get those repairs completed. So there's definitely a more hands-on approach that's needed to manage the short-term rentals on a daily basis. Now, I will say that on a per property basis, once they're really up and running, we're probably spending, I don't know, on average, maybe 10 minutes a day on each property. Um, but you know, that's as true. you start to scale, that's when you know there's obviously a lot more work that goes into it. The last thing that I'll call out when it comes to short-term rentals is that you also have to work on your pricing. It's not just the guest communication, but it's the back-end pieces as well. So you want to make sure that you're regularly reviewing your pricing to make sure that you're not charging too much or too little so that you don't leave money on the table. Whereas with a long-term rental, you set your rates at the beginning of that lease mm -hmm. and you, you don't have to think about it. So just one of the things to consider. So with all that being said, I'd say short-term rentals, I know firsthand uh, requires way more effort and communication. So uh, I think we both agree that long-term rentals wins this round for most passiveness. So, so that gives us a score of two, two. to zero. Yes. Next up, let's talk about cost. And when I say cost, I mean all of the money that you need to get a property uh, up and running as a rental, whether short-term or long-term, and that includes your down payments, 
your closing costs, and any startup costs associated with the property. Now, when you look at a traditional long-term rental, unless you're doing something like the house hacking strategy, most of the time, you're probably going to need to put down somewhere in the neighborhood of 20, sometimes maybe even 30% down to purchase a property. Now, obviously, once you purchase that property, you don't have to worry about furnishing it um, or anything like that because your tenant is responsible for bringing their own furniture uh, and getting the place like live in ready and save for maybe some few major appliances like a fridge or a stove, things like that. Now on the short term rental side, you have access to slightly better financing because these are technically vacation homes, depending on how you set up your financing. So a lot of our properties we've been able to purchase with only 10% down as opposed to the traditional 20% or 30% down that you need for an investment property. Now, obviously we do have more startup costs uh, because you need to furnish these places. Uh, but honestly, in some of the markets that we invest in, we've been able to purchase these properties already furnished. Um, so our startup cost is relatively low. So if I'm given a grade on this one or determining a winner on the cost side, I'm actually gonna go with the short-term rentals because you're able to get it for less money out of pocket on the down payment. Um, and even though you have to furnish it, it's probably not as much as putting down 20 or 30% on a property. So that is short-term rentals is now one, long-term rentals two. All right, so let's talk about predictability. So with long-term rental, um, your tenants sign a lease. So you know for sure that you're gonna expect that payment every single month like clockwork, because again, they signed a lease for it. Now, short-term rentals on the other hand, uh, they're a little less predictable. Mm -hmm. um, you're gonna not have that long-term lease in place. But again, like I said earlier, you're charging a different rate every night that a guest stays there. Um, in some months you might get, you know, this much, other months you might get this much. So there's definitely some flexibility there. Um, so you don't know exactly what your month is going to look like uh, at the start of the month. All right. So for this round, predictability, I'd say the winner is... Long-term rentals. Yes. So that gives us a score now of three for long-term rentals and one for short-term rentals. <laughs> Next, let's talk about money, honey. Everybody wants to know about the money, which one generates more income. So let's dive into that. So I'm going to give you guys an example from our own portfolio. So we own uh, a couple of these, but we own a 391 square foot studio that we run as a short term rental. Now, if we were to try to rent that out as a traditional long term investment, uh, we might be able to get a thousand bucks a month for it. But Last month, that same property generated almost $8,000 in revenue as a short-term rental. Mind um, blowing. I yeah. was so shocked. And 391 square feet. I think, you know, we're, we're in a really good market where we invest in when it comes to short-term rentals. Now I'd venture to say that if you're in a major market uh, where there's strong visitation, you're probably going to see a similar trend where short-term rentals outpace long-term rentals by 2X, 3X, maybe even 4X when it comes to the amount of money that they bring in. Now, I think this one's pretty cut and dry. And I think this is what brings most people to love short-term rentals in the first place mm -hmm. is that they can generate so much more revenue than a traditional long-term rental. Now, this is something I share with a lot of people. If your goal in real estate investing is to replace your W-2 income as quickly as possible, you have to think, if you're getting maybe $150 to $300 per month on a long-term rental, how many of those will you need to purchase to achieve financial freedom? Now, on the other hand, if you're purchasing a, a short-term rental, you might be able to get you know, $3,000 to $5,000 per month in income. Uh, and think how many units do you need at that dollar amount to really replace your income? I have to think if we look at the evidence, it's pretty clear who the winner is for this category and it is short-term rentals. So now we've got a score of three for long-term rentals to two for short-term rentals. All right, one more caveat. I've heard other investors say that you should never buy a short-term rental if it doesn't make sense as a long-term rental. And basically what they're saying is if that same property wouldn't pencil out, if it wouldn't make sense financially as a long-term rental, then you shouldn't buy it. And quite frankly, I think I disagree with that approach. Now say that I'm a hotel investor. Am I going to say I wouldn't buy this hotel because it doesn't make sense as an apartment complex? No, they're two totally different business models. And if you're going into the world of short-term rentals, go into it knowing that you're in it as a hospitality uh, piece of real estate and not as a residential piece of real estate. So, you know, if the numbers work as a short-term rental, then the numbers work as a short-term rental and you just need to be okay with the risk, like we talked about earlier, mm -hmm. that comes along with owning and operating a short-term rental. But I just want to say that, you know, if you've heard someone say that you shouldn't buy a short-term rental, if it doesn't pencil out as a long-term rental, just know I'm here to say that 
I don't agree with that and it doesn't mean that you have to agree with it either. So just food for thought. Now for what you've all been waiting for is the big question, which is the better investment, long-term rentals or short-term rentals? You guys ready for the drum roll? The answer is... It, it depends. depends. So I know it's probably not the answer you guys are looking for, but it's true. Um, if you're someone that really is risk averse, um, someone that wants a very passive investment, then I think long-term rentals is obviously a better choice for you. But if you're someone that wants uh, bigger returns, more income, and you're okay with the slightly increased risk that comes along with short-term rentals, then short-term rentals is the way that you need to go. So I don't think there is a one size fits all approach to real estate investing and honestly, I think that's what makes real estate investing so beautiful. You know, and if I'm getting sentimental, oh, that's so <laughs> I think that's what makes it so great is because there's so <laughs> many different paths that you can go down or so many different approaches you can take. And you just choose the one that best suits you and your specific wants, your specific needs, your specific desires. So we love short-term rentals because it, it suits our needs. It suits what we want. Um, but you know, we've got long-term rentals as well, but we're in the process of selling those long-term <laughs> rentals to buy more short-term. So again, it's all what makes the most sense for you. Just want to add one more tip on top of what Tony just said. So if you're interested in doing short-term rentals, really think about if you have the time and availability to run these short-term rentals. Like I mentioned, it's pretty much all I do. Like I, I truly don't have a W-2 job anymore. I, this is all I focus on and it does take a lot of time. So think about that in your daily life. If you do or don't have the time to manage a short-term rental. Yeah, and if you don't have the time, but you want to get involved, maybe look at finding a partner, yeah. right? We partner with investors all the time. If you guys want to learn more about it, head over to alphageekcapital.com. Um, now we do make our partners do a little bit of work, but uh, <laughs> if you guys want to get in and you don't have the time, then that's what we're here for. We hope today's video helped you get a little bit more comfortable with the pros and cons for both long-term and short-term rentals. Now, again, if you guys enjoyed our video, please do us a huge favor and subscribe to our channel. Yeah. Smash the like button smash the subscribe button um uh, or hit ring the, the like. bell you do all those things turn notifications on yeah. follow uh, your girl on instagram yep i'm tony j robinson on instagram she's um, at sarah, sarah Rad. oh yeah i'm sarah Rad. i'm now mrs robinson but that's not my instagram <laughs> so we love you guys we hope you're enjoying the content and you know guys leave some questions if you guys have yeah. some more uh, maybe topics we didn't hit about this specific, uh, you know, short term versus long term battle. Let us know in the comments. and We'll do our best to give you guys a good answer. But until next time, I'm Tony. And I'm Sarah. And we are the, the Real, Real Estate, Estate Robinsons. Robinsons.